this committee and congressman we do understand that there is this second whistleblower who has first-hand knowledge of the events surrounding the phone call between president trump and the leader of ukraine what does this add to the case you're all making well good morning john um hard to know because of course nobody's actually seen what the this purported second whistleblower has to say presumably that will change this week I'm glad this individual, by the way, is going through the whistleblower process. That's what the first whistleblower did. That's the right thing to do. Um, I, I, I've made the point uh, to a couple of people now. I, I, I sort of um, get a kick out of the president's rage on Twitter at Adam Schiff, at Nancy Pelosi, at the Democrats. As a Democrat who's in the room, I will tell you, we're like a bunch of folks in the outfield just catching constant pop flies that are coming from people who are actually in the room or in and around the president. Um, you know, the first whistleblower, certainly that was true of. Uh, the media now for weeks has been getting stories about other presidential conversations with leaders. You know, this is this is not a Democratic led thing. This is people around the president who have watched his behavior for a very long time and are finally saying this can't happen anymore. I'm going to come forward. You hope they do it through the whistleblower process. Some of them are obviously doing it by talking to the press, which is which is not the ideal way to do it. Well, we always welcome people coming forward and telling us their, their <laughs> version of events. I think the American people would very much like to know what happened there. Look, we have evidence at this point in our hands. We have the rough transcript of the phone call. We have the, the, the texts that went back and forth between U.S. diplomats. So what more do you want on the committee before you draw up articles of impeachment? Yeah, no, you're exactly right. I mean, again, I sort of chuckle at the defenses of the uh, the ever changing defenses of those in Congress who at all costs are going to defend the president, you know, saying it's hearsay. Even as you point out, the transcript comes out, you know, validating exactly what the whistleblower said. But to answer your question, um, we, we have to learn um, about at least two more things. Uh, number one, and probably most important, is something that I think we'll be taking up this week, which is this question of whether an ambassador, uh, Marie Yovanovitch, who was the ambassador to Ukraine until she was relieved of her duties, was she relieved of her duties because she was refusing to go along with the president's political agenda as channeled by Rudy Giuliani? If that fact pattern is true, uh, we have a huge problem, right? Uh, that's almost as bad as using U.S. aid for political purposes. You know, messing around with the career of a dedicated diplomat because she didn't go along with some crazy uh, run for political dirt on your opponent. That in and of itself is a major scandal. We're going to learn more about that this week. We need to get to the bottom of that. I think we need to talk to Rudy Giuliani. This guy was running a one-person uh, ambassadorial effort for the political benefit of the president. Uh, we need to understand exactly what he was doing, who he was talking to, and what kind of promises he was making. You've just I gone further, that though, on that point. Those... Just on that point, you just went further than Chairman Adam Schiff has gone, because he hasn't said that he wants to hear from Rudy Giuliani. You want to hear from Rudy Giuliani? Um, I do want to hear, uh, and I don't speak for the chairman, and, uh, and obviously he makes the final decisions, but, um, you know, to my way of thinking, Rudy Giuliani has, uh, you know, he's the lead uh, actor in this whole drama, uh, meeting in Madrid, uh, you know, going and, and putting pressure on State Department officials. So, again, I'll, I'll, I'll defer to Adam on exactly who we're going to talk to, but to me, Rudy Giuliani is, is, is probably the central actor in creating the pressure on the State Department and other people on behalf of the president's political interests. I interrupted you. You were going to tell me there was a second area you want more information before you start drafting articles of impeachment. Yeah, and it really is secondary. But, you know, this whole notion that the White House uh, actually took the transcript of the president's call with the Ukrainian president off the traditional server and put it in a highly classified server, uh, there's two questions about that. Number one, was that a cover-up? Um, it happens to be against the uh, against the law to classify something in order to avoid embarrassment. Um, but uh, if that happened, then we need to ask the question of did that happen with other uh, conversations that the president had with foreign leaders? Because remember, the allegation is that people were so shocked. Uh, lawyers inside the White House, again, the president's people were so shocked by that conversation that they said, hey, we're going to reduce the distribution and put it on this more classified server. Again, that's not quite, to my way of thinking, as, as serious an allegation as some ambassador's career uh, being wound up because she didn't go along with, uh, with, with, the, uh, with the plan. Um, but I do think we need to understand what happened Just to there. be clear, putting it on the more secret server wouldn't require classifying unclassified information. It would just be putting it somewhere else, correct? 
that is that that is true. Um, and, and there and I should clarify, there's not an indication that it was improperly classified. What you have here is at least the allegation or the appearance uh, of a cover up. And again, I think the American people deserve to know uh, if that happened, why it happened and why they felt it needed to be covered up. A number of Republicans, and there have been different defenses of the president, but there's one that I want to focus on. Tucker Carlson wrote it, and he almost seemed to be a plea to Republicans in Congress to take this line, which is this, which is to say, you know, what the president did was wrong. He should not have leaned on the president of Ukraine to dig up dirt on a political opponent. That's bad, but not impeachable. How would you respond to that line? Well... <laughs> I guess at some level, of all the crazy defenses I've heard in the last couple of weeks, um, that one at least has some coherence to it. I mean, you know, to hear my Republican colleague saying that the whistleblower's complaint is based on hearsay when, when the White House itself confirmed that the whistleblower's uh, account of the phone call were accurate, um, you know, there's been all, all sorts of crazy defenses. Um, look, at the end of the day, that, is, uh, that at least has some coherence to it. But remember, what is impeachable... Um, is one thing and one thing only, and that is what the Congress of the United States determines to be impeachable. Now, does it clear the barrier of high crimes and misdemeanors? If it is true, and we're still in an inquiry, if it is true that the president held up hundreds of millions of dollars of, of aid to a vulnerable country in order to achieve a political objective of getting them to find or manufacture dirt on Joe Biden, hey, if that's not impeachable, I don't know what is. Um, you know, if Barack Obama had done a tenth of these things, he would have been impeached twice before lunchtime. So, again, there's at least some coherence to what Tucker Carlson is saying. But the notion that if all of these allegations are true, that that is somehow acceptable behavior by the president. Uh, you know, I don't think that's an America that any of us would recognize as the kind of country we believe in. Congressman Jim Himes from Connecticut, thanks for being with us this morning. Thank you, John.